A long jumper returning to training begins at his first session with a jump of four meters. Then at the next session, he jumps six meters and he continues to improve according to this table. Okay? Part one <clears throat> just asks us to extend this pattern, what's going to happen at jump number 10. And part two says, in which session would his jump be? And then they give you this number. I think it's 511 on 512. Okay, and that's, that's the question. Okay? Now, what's tricky about this is that if you need to look at this data and think, well, okay, what does it mean? And how can I use all of the mathematical language and ideas to interpret this? Okay? Now, I think most of us recognize when you have a look at this part in here, right? you're like, oh, it's a GP. I recognize that. And you say the first term is 4 and the... Um, Ratio between terms is a half. So that's fine. So we get that this guy here is kind of like the nth term, right? So it's like there's the zero term, the first term, etc., or first, second, third, whichever way you count, okay? But then you look at this guy and you say that's weird because this is a series sequence, I should say, but it's not a GP, is it? Because you're like, oh, from here to here, you don't multiply by some number that gets you from here to here, nor do you get the same number from here to here. Okay, So then you have to think, well, hold on a second. I'm getting these numbers from these numbers. Do you see that? To get to this, I have to add um, this and this. right? So I'm actually going to label these. I'm going to go T1, T2, T3, T4. Okay. So where does this 6 come from? Let's get my colour. This is actually... T1 plus T2. Do you see that? That's where the number comes from. Yeah. When you have a look at the next one, you take this number and then you add whatever the next improvement is. So in fact, it's T1 plus T2 plus T3. That's what the 7 is, right? And by the same logic, I'm going to run out of space, but this is T1, T2, T3, and the most, the most recent improvement. Okay. Now, when you write it out in this way, it kind of becomes a little clearer that this second row, the actual distance he jumps, is not forming a GP. It's the sums of this GP. Does that make sense? It's, you know, there's that's S2. By definition, that's what we call S2. That's S3. That's S4. Okay. So therefore, we want this to fit in somewhere around here. So what we're solving for is n when the sum of the series is what we're looking for. Okay, so here's the way I would have actually done my working. I'd say um, S n, and I don't know what n is. S n equals um, seven and five hundred eleven over five hundred and twelve. Right, and for myself, I would say I'm solving for n because the question, the wording is in which session. So that's that's what n is. Okay, and then I say, wait, hold on a second. I know all of the bits and pieces that make up this series. I just need to put them into the sum of a GP formula. What is the sum of a GP? A it's going to be, let's write it up here, A outside of... So I can, I've got two forms to choose from here. I can either go on the denominator, 1 minus R, or I can go R minus 1. Having a think about what this ratio is, which do you think is a better choice? 1 minus R. Okay, I think 1 minus R is better. So this is um, 1 minus R to the n, and this is 1 minus r. Yep. So I'm going to fit in all my pieces over here. The first term, of course, is 4, right? Uh, 1 minus, now my r is a half every time, so this is a half to the power of n. By the way, easy mistake to make, just writing a half, and then the n, people will like say, oh, what's that n? I know what that is, and then the 2 doesn't get raised. So that's on the numerator and my denominator. Okay, cool. And that's what this number is purportedly equal to. And all I need to do from here is just shuffle around the numbers and get to the algebra, right? You can see this is 4 divided by a half. What's 4 divided by a half? That's 8. So I'm going to divide both sides by 8. That'll leave me with this. Wow, that's really slanted, sorry. Um, this divided by 8. I think it's this. I was reading it. Let's double check it. Um, seven, uh, yeah, it is. Over one, two. Okay, so there's our number there, having divided by eight. And because you can see that n is up in the power, I'm going to have to appeal to logs in a second. So um, I haven't quite got there yet. I guess I'll subtract one. 
from both sides. So if I leave this guy over here, if you subtract one from this, that's 4,096 on 4,096. So I think that leaves you with that. Does that make sense? I've gone one pass. Yeah. Um, I don't have to worry about these negative signs anymore. And this is actually one over two to the n. Do you agree with that? Because it's one to the n divided by two to the n. So that tells me this. So now, I mean, I could just do this on my calculator, but if I wanted to do it properly, I would say n is log base two, bases are the same, of 4096, which I think gives you 12, doesn't it? Okay. So I think what was hard about this question is that it was all in the phrasing. It was like, I know all of these formulas. I think once we all got to here, we were like, oh, it's fine. It's all downhill. But it's like working out where is this hiding inside here? Okay.